Hey, it's Eric here from Sensory Dad. You know, I've joined a bunch of these Facebook groups because, you know, my intent here for this whole thing is to really help people uh, that are struggling with uh, the discovery of sensory needs in their child and the initial um, prognosis coming out and, and all the different things that you're overwhelmed with. <sighs> Looking through these groups literally takes you back to three years and change ago to where you know our our help our our caregivers you know and, and kathy and you guys you know who you are um that that really initially saw these things and i remember the feelings we had and how really difficult it was to go through this um you know and and have no answers you know have have literal no input um so anybody who knows me knows that I get uh, really vocal about this stuff and, you know, and I, you know, we need to get more awareness out there for it because one common denominator I see in all these, these stinking groups and, and God bless these people, they're diagnosing it at 18 months and, and, and two years. And, you know, they already got a grasp on this and they're already reaching out for help because there's now groups and, and sure as hell when we started, there wasn't groups, but one, one thing that I continue to see is that you know, everybody in their circle, you know, and, and it's a team and everybody in a circle and, you know, it takes a village to raise a kid kind of thing has doubts. And, and a lot of comments are like, well, it's, it's all in their head. You know, this isn't real. And, and the doubt and everything like that. And, you know, the fact that, well, they just need a good smack on the ass or, you know, you just need to be a tough parent or you're coddling your kid is, is one I saw the other day. Realize realize people the surroundings if you have friends and you happen to get to this page and you have friends that are going through this and you see that they're emotionally freaking wrecked because their kid they they can't find control of their kid believe me the shit is real it's not in their head i can post you a thousand videos of meltdowns that my wife and i have recorded to use back to play back to leo you know, to work through this stuff. And then you find something that works and it stops working after a week or two. Like what I would say, you know, it doesn't take anything. You know, they say about the muscles in the face, it takes so many muscles to frown and it takes so many muscles to smile. Like it's, what does it cost you to be supportive? You know, and just even, even buy into it. Maybe do some freaking research. You know, these parents have it hard enough. You know, we're in a good place right now, but it, it dang sure wasn't for a long time. I mean, it, it's just, guys, just be supportive, you know, just just look into it. And and for the people that are struggling and everything like that, if you've got stubborn people around you that, that really do believe that this is just something that um, the kid's making up and at, what I would say to these parents is make a playbook, you know, and, and like I said about the scientific method in one of my prior videos, if you have to look like an NFL coach and you have to make a laminated board, like a freaking laminated board and front and back, and you say, if my child does X, Y, and Z, these are the potential things that can help the heavy breathing, you know, the, the tantrum to where they fall on the ground, this, that, and the other thing, you know, give them for a sensory seeker, give them, you know, deep pressure feedback, maybe a big hug, a nice hug would help blowing lightly in their face, you know, um, squeezing their shoulders and, you know, just hold their head to your, your chest and push on the back of their head because they're, they're really seeking that deep pressure feedback. You know, that move alone squashed half of the tantrums that Leo had. Now, sometimes he would push and he wouldn't want to be near you. And guess what? That, that's par for the course. I mean, that's what you're going to deal with in these situations. Not everything is going to work every stinking time. And that's where the frustration comes in. Because as a society, we're glued to the take a pill and fix this and the immediate gratification. Well, guess what? Throw that shit out the window with this stuff. You got to do trial and error every single freaking day. You know, these. The, if you hand five of these to your caregiver, your daycare, your helper at daycare, the teacher, the teacher's aide, uh, even, you know, if you get a chance, talk to the bus driver, you know, because we have issues on the bus. 
th there are so many ways, you know, once you, you go through this motion and you put that much work and effort into getting these people some solutions in that, I can tell you right now, I've gotten calls from the school counselor and they're just like, hey, we tried this, we tried this, we tried this. Can you think of anything? You know, and they call you and they're like, do you have a minute to talk? And and they'll be blunt with you, man. You can go to school for a thousand years for psych and, and, and child behavior and everything like that. And guess what? Guess what? You know, it's like, you know, you can do everything in a laboratory. When you get out on the street, that shit changes. Like, it just does not work. And it's like, wow, my textbook said everything should work. Well, you know what? It, it doesn't work like that, guys. It, it doesn't. So what I would say is, you know, if you get a playbook or something like that and get all these potential solutions, I know you're going to look a little crazy when you hand somebody, a, you know, a placard with with 50 different behaviors like, oh, they're chewing. Well, here, here's a chew toy. Here's this. Here's that. You know, educating everybody around us and they're not going to be receptive at first. Not a lot of people are until they're put in a situation where they can't control your kid and then it becomes their problem and then they'll actually freaking listen to you. You know, well, well, I guess it isn't made up. No shit. I've been trying to tell you that. You know what I mean? Like, that's the frustration that we dealt with. And we don't really deal with that now because we've educated everybody around us. We've gotten our circle. You know, I could tell you as a family, I know I'm kind of off on a tangent here, but as a family, we, we lived in this neighborhood for almost 11 years now. Didn't even know neighbors beyond one or two houses down. We didn't know anybody. You know, we'd walk the kids around the neighborhood with the dogs or something like that and wave at everybody. But it wasn't until the last couple of years that we actually had friends because we were tired of the doubts. We were tired of standing in public, you know, and, and your kid have a meltdown and you look around and everybody's staring at you like you're a jerk or a bad parent and judging you and everything like that. And the one thing, you know, the, the island, whenever you're trapped on a boat, you know, that little look of joy when you look around and you see one other parent is like, I've been there. He's tired. You know, he might have some issues. And, and you get the one pair of understanding eyes and, and it it's enough to get you through the situation and, and to grab a hold of your kid and give him a hug and talk him through something like this. You know, that's the one good thing. So if you're that person out in public that can then help be supportive if the mom, you know, all her bags are laying everywhere and she's got to grab her kid. And, you know, if you're the one person that can grab her jacket and say, here you go, like, you know, and have their back. That speaks volumes whenever somebody is desperate on an island with their kid that's having one of these breakdowns and there's absolutely nobody that understands. And everybody's like, Jesus, man, can't that kid shut up? If you're that guy... Please don't ever run into me when I'm dealing with this because I'm kind of a jerk when it comes to that. What I would say to the parents, if, if you get if you get flustered and everything, I'll tell you a little story. My wife, uh, we were in a Pittsburgh airport going through security, and of course, the the weighted blankets and everything like that were they were always a big issue. They want to scan them, they want to bomb test them, and all that kind of stuff. And this older lady was giving us the flat tire, Psh, ah, you know making all these noises and directed right at us. She's five feet from us looking at us and everything. And I was getting tired of it. My wife's, you know, dealing with the situation. Then I deal with the situation. Here, let me take him. Let me, let me see how he is, you know? And, uh, my wife finally looks at this older woman and says, you know what? He's got a sensory processing disorder. You know, this is an affliction that, you know, it's clothing, it's this, it's that. And she explains the whole situation to the lady. And she says, if you feel like you need to keep judging us, I can educate you on this entire thing. You know, I, I can give you paperwork. We can break this down so that you don't sit there and just judge and make noises and stare at us. You know, and that was probably one of the, the proudest moments I had of my wife because she really came up with a solution to, you know, to squash that situation fast and, and deal with it. So... What I would say, you know, you say to your family members and, and other, you know, your surrounding, hey, get on the team or, or, or get off it or just shut up. Like, if you're not going to help, you're only going to hurt. So, you know, help. You know what I mean? Pitch in or learn. Just freaking pick up a book. And if you don't want to pick up a book, watch a YouTube video. You know, the, the three seconds. Thanks.